number of them. Who knows how many we totally got, but here you're looking at about 40 of the test cases. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, and uh, for each test case, we have its status, this configuration against which it was run, uh, information about bugs, if bugs were found with that, uh, information about who ran the tests, when we plan to run it, when we actually ran it, the effort, and so forth. Now you see here, this effort number, these guys, these, this is going to, to um, play into that uh, chart that we were looking at earlier, but it was more graphical and accessible presentation, not this just tremendously dense uh, chart that you see here. Now, this is a summary, and it looks on a test suite by test suite basis. We're trying to account for, well, you know, how many tests have we run, and skipped or passed or failed, and so forth. How many tests have we um, not yet run or queued up or in progress or blocked or what have you? Um, how does our, our uh, planned effort compare to our actual effort? Um, you know, these kinds of things. Now, this is, this is very useful for a test manager, but uh, again, you know, uh, showing this to somebody outside of testing uh, usually not a good idea because they, they don't understand. It's too much data. There's no trend information. There is data on there that they do understand. They think, like earned value, you know, a lot of project managers will think they understand that, but they do. The cause behind a test team not achieving its earned value numbers is usually external in nature, not due to the test team screwing up. So I would avoid those charts. Okay, uh, so what I want to do now is quickly walk you through a case study. Now, some of you who have been in my, uh, some of my training courses before might have heard this um, case study, but uh, some of you might not or forgotten it. Uh, this is an example of how we can, uh, we can tell a story about a project with, uh, by doing an analysis of the test results. Now, this, in this particular case, analysis happened afterwards, but it would have been better if somebody had done this during the project and gotten on top of it. So the context of this is uh, my associates and I were hired to come in and do some testing on the second iteration of a project where the first iteration had failed. Basically, they were trying to get something together, uh, home equity loan processing application, and the time to get it, the attempt to get it done and out and into the data center the first time around been a failure. So uh, we were brought in to replace the test team that had been engaged the first time around. Um, and it turned out really that the test team was not, not actually at fault for the failure, but they sort of took the fall for it. Um, as I came to realize that, that of course was somewhat disturbing to me, and I, I realized it would be very good for me to understand why, um, why this had happened, what had happened to cause this project to fail. So what I started to do some analysis, and I saw things like um, uh, endless discovery of bugs and a lot of uh, waste and inefficiency, uh, problems with it taking longer and longer to close the bugs over time. Uh, and it, it turned out that what they had were a tremendous amount of instability in the requirements um, fueling the, the endless bug discovery, uh, a lot of regression, a lot of things being broken. and. Uh, trying to uh, move the process along uh, too fast. And these are all things that contributed. So let me show you some of the, the uh, analyses I did. This is a uh, somewhat more crude version of the uh, open-close chart I showed you pre previously. You can ignore all the little noise stuff that's going on here at the bottom, the, the, the stuff here. The interesting information is, is in the two um, data sets. The, this guy here, the, the red line and this guy, the green line, you know, I mean, uh, you see it's tracking uh, the total number of bugs closed. It's tracking the total number open, but, you know, what's happening? Where are we going? So the original, pro the original project plan was six weeks, one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks. Okay, at the end of the six week, there's 400 bugs that have been fixed, which you know, is pretty good to fix 400 bugs in six weeks, but there's still 50 bugs out. Okay, so let's give it another week. Well, you know, now we get 450 bugs, another 500 bugs outstanding. So well, that, that was a backslide. 
Uh, and now here, you're looking at about 75 bugs outstanding. And here, it's wow, it's now it's up to 125 or so outstanding. And now it's you're down to about 75 again, and it's 50, but it's holding at 50, right? Um, so, you know, it's like they, they get out. You look throughout the project, you know, it's just kind of like uh, right right away, it just sort of jumped up to there being about 50 bugs open within the the uh, third uh, start of the third week. And it just held between uh, 50 as kind of a low water mark and uh, 100 some high water mark, right? What's going on? Where are these bugs coming from? Well, there wasn't any uh, requirement specification. Uh, basically, the uh, the vendor that had sold the application to this this bank, this big bank, had said, uh, you know, you know, we don't need a requirement specification. We just want you guys to be happy. You tell us what you want, and off they went. You know, this is what's happening. Is it's just uh, bug report after bug report after bug report. Are they bug reports or are they enhancement requests? God only knows. Okay, and what else is going on? It's interesting, potentially problematic here. Uh, well. Um, process, bad, bad bug fix process. Um, the way this worked was that uh, the uh, client was on the East Coast, in the uh, Eastern time zone in the United States, um, and the vendor that was building the application was over on the West Coast of the United States in the Pacific time zone. Um, and so that, that led to a three-hour time difference. And so what would happen is that around uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon or so, there would be a bug meeting and project status meeting. And in that meeting, the uh, client, uh, my, my soon-to-be client, at that point future client, would go through the list of all the bugs that had been found uh, that, uh, that day and the, you know, the, previous, the end of the previous day since the previous meeting, basically, and say, okay, here are all the bugs we need fixed. And the vendor, you know, this, at this point it's like 10 o'clock, um, they're getting out of the meeting. It's around 11 o'clock, and so this is um, you know about the time for a startup company programmer to show up for work. And uh, so the the program manager, um, or excuse me, product manager, the vendor side would go and divvy up these uh, bug reports amongst the developers. Excuse me, and would tell them uh, you need to fix these bugs before you leave. Well, that's that's one reason why the bug fix number there that you see on the previous page is tremendous. You know, I mean, you think about it through hundreds of bugs in eleven week period. You know, this is this is not uh, not not anything to uh, sneeze at. <laughs> pardon the pun. But um, you know, they, they pay a price for that, and one of the prices they pay for that is it starts to take longer and longer to fix bugs because, oh, guess what? They're not doing their best work because they're under tremendous time pressure. And so you see this closure period going up and up and up and up. And, uh, you know, it's uh, symptomatic of a destabilization of the code base and creation of an enormous amount of technical debt that sooner or later will have to get paid back. Okay, so I've seen those two charts, and I'm thinking, okay, well, that's, that's a problem. These guys really got themselves into problems. But, you know... Because sometimes it just doesn't matter. You know, there are some projects, I'm sure some of you have been on them, where you, you, did, you just did everything right. Um, and this, the essential problems of the project, unavoidable problems of the project, doomed the project. You, didn't never, you were never going to succeed. It didn't have anything to do with the people. It didn't have anything to do with the process. It just had to do with the fact that you were trying to, to do something that was just fundamentally not doable. Um, that happens. So I wanted to see if that was one of the uh, that was the case here. Um, were, were these guys just doing something that was doomed? And yeah, they 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 went about it in a stupid way, which hastened its demise. But the, the, regardless, it was going to be a croaked project. So what I did is I wanted to see. I wanted to separate out those bugs that were basically just uh, enhancement requests masquerading as bugs, and those that were were real, honest to God bugs. Um, and so the way that I went about that was I said, well, there are certain bugs that had to do with the ability of the system to interoperate with other systems in the data center. And those are, those are essential bugs. Those are bugs that would have had to been fixed regardless um, you know, because it, the system had to work in the data center. And 